Thanks for that, uh, Stefan Vassen there. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, let's take this on. We can speak to Geoffrey Lazarus, who's the head of the Health Systems Research Group at the Barcelona Institute for Global Health. He lived in Denmark for 20 years and now joins us live from Madrid in Spain. Uh, Mr Lazarus, so case is high in Denmark, but they're going for it. What do you make of it all? Well, cases have almost never been higher. 45,000 cases yesterday alone, up from 700 a day a couple of months ago. I think it's a bad move to lift all restrictions. I understand the population is tired and many are thrilled that all restrictions are being removed, but it gives a false sense of security. I think that could have been a more gradual um, reduction in, in, in lifting. Uh, so the WHO emergency chief, Mike Ryan, he, he's, he's fearful, too, that political pressure... Uh, perhaps that could be the case here uh, in Denmark, will lead to more countries um, heading for premature openings. Is that what you sense might happen? I think it is. I think Denmark, in that sense, is setting a bad precedent. It's basically politics over public health. And so you would say that it is driven by politics, uh, but to what end? Because it, you think that basically the public would be dissatisfied that... Uh, the government is acting in this way and they don't have to suffer any more restrictions. Yeah, and it surprises me a bit because it's not suffering a lot to need to show your digital pass, your COVID certificate to get into bars and restaurants and maybe the cinema. They could have kept face masks on, at least in public transportation. Um, I don't think many people would be complaining about that. So I do think it's a lot about um, the politics and being, being able to say, you know, we were the first to do this. We were, in, we were the government in power. But um, I think it's sending the wrong message to the population. So cases are higher than ever. And hospitalizations are actually going up, although the numbers in the intensive care units is, is not going up. So that's a good sign. But, I mean, you know, hospitalizations are going up, which is quite worrisome. But when you say send the wrong message to the population, is that because you mean those who are as yet unvaccinated to encourage them to get vaccinated? Because the government cites it's, exactly. its own high vaccination rate, doesn't it? And says that, you know, Omicron isn't all that severe, which is, which is the case. Well, it's, it's easy to say it's not severe in a country that's so highly vaccinated, so many people have the booster, and until now they've been very obediently wearing their face masks, checking the COVID certificates. So it's not the best um, case to look at. You know, when you look at the unvaccinated, um, th that's the population that, that's ending up largely in, in hospitals. So I think it's one about trying to get people to get vaccinated, but it's also, um, you know, not everyone is, is boosted and even people who are vaccinated can get infected Affected and some of them can go on to have serious consequences. So I do believe that the re gradual reduction of restrictions would make good sense in Denmark, but to lift it all in one go doesn't really make good public health sense. So, so what would your timescale be? Uh, what would a gradual uh, lift on restrictions look like? Uh, when would restrictions be completely lifted in an ideal world, in your view? Well, they would be lifted when hospitalizations are going down not when they're going up, and the same for, for cases. I mean, if we are going to focus on, uh, not on cases, but on hospitalizations, numbers in the intensive care unit, and deaths, then I would want those three indicators to be going down quite a bit before I started lifting um, any restrictions. I hope that that's going to happen in soon, three, four, five weeks. But while they're still going up, I don't think it makes sense to, um, to lift the restrictions. Jeffrey Lazarus, we'll leave it there. That's Jeffrey Lazarus from the Barcelona Institute for Global Health. Thanks a lot. Thank you.